Hi everyone, if you are watching a recording, do fast forward about a minute and a half is where we're going. And I don't think it's always oh, it going. <laughs> Every day is a new adventure. All right. Okay, we are happening. Technology is almost up and running. Couple things going on here. All right, so then what's going on on Friday? What did we decide? Anything? Okay. Oh. TLS is happening on Friday. Hello. Let's see. Well, hello out there in Pennsylvania. How you doing? We are just about there. A little bit more that way. Okay, so it's one o'clock, honey, you ready? <laughs> Hi everyone, today is Monday, September 19th, week 78. I've got Andy in my ear, he says he's ready, I say I'm ready. It's gonna be a fun project today, oh my gosh. Unlike the project that we did, oh, I don't even know what it was, but it was a while ago <laughs> that we did this project. It was during uh, Minimal Metal Mondays. And um, well, if you recall, we are doing It Spins, which is a pinwheel. Here we are. Mm -hmm. And if you were around, but if you weren't around, you can always look back. All these videos, by the way, all these old, older videos are available on my QTalk Facebook page, and it will be there until Facebook decides to delete them. And same thing on YouTube. If you are not on YouTube, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. It helps the numbers. I appreciate it. But it is QFOM Gray at YouTube and um, the Facebook page is QTalk. If you're on my personal Facebook page, you can jump on over to the QTalk page and then you can see all the videos and things that are there because the personal page, I don't even know what they do with the videos. I don't pay attention there, but we're just sort of there. Nonetheless, okay, so today is Makeover Monday, which means I'm revisiting projects um, from the previous, this past 78 weeks and you know, revisiting them and making them better or finding a new approach or maybe redesigning them. Well, again, if you were watching this project, it was called It Spins last year, you would not forgot, have forgotten what it was. Why? Because it was a disastrous project. Now, typically when I come on live, I try to keep it at about an hour. <laughs> I believe this one went to an hour and 45 minutes. It was an absolute mess. What happened? Well, if you're looking closely, Actually, this was the, the original. I did it as a two-tone, and yes, these parts spin, but I took it off and tried it again on um, another piece here. And um, anyway, so that said, you know, with so many pieces going, let's see, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, five. So 20 pieces that had to be soldered together, and um, it just kept falling apart. I lost count at seven tries. <laughs> and again, if you're watching, you know, it was Murphy's Law. What could go wrong went wrong, including my torch, if I remember correctly, fell into my pickle that day. And it was just an absolute wreck. So, you know, so why not be even more self-deprecating? Self I'll tell you the rest of the story. So that day, struggle, struggle, struggle. Once I was done, I had a phone meeting and I was meeting somebody um, in the next couple hours after that. And lo and behold, these people who are not typically watching <laughs> were watching that day. And I remember I got on this phone meeting about 15 minutes after I was done with the live. And the first thing this person said to me was, How's your Monday? It's like, oh my God, you're watching, weren't you? And of course, the big giggle comes, you know, they burst out in, in laughter. Okay, that was fun. That was sort of funny. It was sort of, <laughs> you have to laugh at yourself, right? So then fast forward two hours later, I'm meeting somebody, same day. And as soon as I get there, like, 
how's your Monday going? It's like, oh, you were watching too. I feel like everybody and their mother was watching me fail that day. But we're not going to fail today. I've absolutely simplified this project and um, we won't be soldering. Okay, I had to think about that for half a second. We won't be soldering <laughs> at all for this project, but it's going to be fun. So again, last year we did this and we soldered some, well, I say 20, heck. Is that right? That's more than 20 because I was only 20 on one, 20 pieces on one and then there's 16 pieces on another. So there was 36 pieces that had to be soldered together. So this year I decided, oh, you know, let's, let's try this again. So instead, this time we're going to use a little bit of sheet metal and it'll spin. See, it spins and it's a pinwheel and it's a lot of fun. And you know, what's great too is you can make it any size you want. It depends on how small you want to go. And now I think about, wow, that'd be fun earrings. Okay. So what, what are you going to need for this project today? Let's jump right in. We will need a leather mallet, a brass brush or steel wool will be helpful, a nice cutter, something that's going to cut at least 16 gauge wire, a pair of chain nose, multi-looping pliers or round nose. Multi-looping plier always makes it nice and easy. A center punch and a chasing hammer and a bench block to go with that, of course. If you have one of these handy dandy center um, binders, that's going to really help you to do this project. And a flex shaft with a drill bit, a high speed drill bit, uh, number 54, I think, for the 16 gauge wire. And then um, a divider is going to make your life a lot easier. A ruler, perhaps, you may or may not need your ruler. It's up to you um, if you want to be more precise about it. And then as far as materials, you'll need 24 gauge uh, sheet metal of any kind. I'm going to be using copper today and I will be using some 16 gauge brass wire. Now when I'm using wire, it's always raw wire, it's never plated wire because we're going to put a torch to it and if it's plated, it's going to burn off and turn black and yucky and it's never going to be pretty again anyway. So another challenge about plated wire is depending on where you're getting your plated wire, that wire could be very questionable, meaning is it um, copper that they are plating or is it some sort of base white metal? Because if it's a base white metal, it's a hot mess. At the very least, if it's copper and it's plated, the only thing that's going to happen is the plating will burn off and it'll leave behind copper. And it's just sort of funny because I was in a conversation with somebody who was like, oh yeah, I always use plated. I'm like, and you solder? and nothing happens to it, oh, it's just fine. I'm like, let me see. And really the bottom line is, yeah, what they're doing is they're burning off the plating to get to the copper, having to do all that cleanup, and then they have copper wire. So my attitude is, why don't you just use copper wire? First of all, it's cheaper and it's a lot less work and it will present a lot less issues, especially when you're trying to solder it and you have all of that soot and um, dirt running around. So just my, my two cents there. All right, so how are we going to do this? You need to create a square, first of all. Easiest way for me to create a square is, you know, when I'm starting off with a piece of sheet metal, you know, square is not that easy for me. I always at least try to find a nice right angle and make sure that that's nice and even or nice and straight before I do anything else. And now that I have to have determined that I have two straight sides, I can just take my um, divider and create a square from those sides. Like I'm not going to create it from this angle over here because it's an angle. I'm going to create it from here what I know is a straight side. So by creating a line there, I just scored my metal. I can go ahead and cut it with a pair of bezel shears. Did I mention you needed bezel shears? Anyway, and actually, if you have a bench shear, definitely use that. No reason why you should not be using your bench shear. It's gonna cut a lot straighter, right? I have one, but most of you guys don't, and then I have to get up and cut it over there. But we wanna do the demo here. Okay, and then I'm going to use the other straight side and without changing the size on my um, divider, I'm going to score it again and this will give me a perfect square. Okay. So we'll go ahead and cut that like so. Take out a file or some pan sandpaper and you want to go ahead and file those edges. Make it nice. 
I'm lopping off those corners just a little bit. Not creating too much of a radius on it, but you know, take off any sharp edges, stroke your metal. Okay, make it feel good. Because we use our shears on it, it will have gnarled the corners. Go ahead and flatten it out with either a nylon mallet or a leather mallet. You know, some people prefer nylon and that's fine, and some people prefer leather. But the nylon mallet, the biggest difference is it does have a tendency to be a little bit more slippy, I'm going to say. It, it doesn't quite grab on to the metal. Okay, so there we are. And then I'm just going to take out my shears and I'm going to cut diagonal slits towards the middle. I'm going to cut about a 5 8 inch slit. I'm going to eyeball it today and not um, bother to measure it, but you could take out your divider if you wanted to. And mark it. This way, the divider is great because this way you'll always be even. You see if I mark it, mark it mark it. It, it. You'll always know that you're in the right spot. But another thing too you can do is you can mark a square in the center of this at about a quarter inch. That should give you what you need. But I'm just going to cut it and eyeball it. And I'm pointing my shears directly across so I know that I'm at a diagonal. If you really want to you can take out your ruler and either score or um, mark a line across, okay? And it just occurred to me, I skipped a step. You need to find the center of this. All right, so we're gonna do this again. All right, you need to find the center and create a hole in the, in the middle. Sorry, going backwards here. So I'm gonna flatten this out, which is okay. If you did this, it's fine. doesn't have to be completely flat because we're going to be messing it up anyway. Uh, take out my Sharpie. Make a hole in the middle. Or mark a hole. Mark the center for a hole. We'll center punch that. This will help drilling. And you know, if you have a um, bench that you can drill into, drill right into the bench, or grab a piece of scrap wood and um, you can drill into that, or you can even drill in, drill into your bench pin. That's not a bad thing either. That's what bench pins are for. And they're inexpensive. You know, they're like $8 with the clamp. And, you know, if you actually have a bench pin that is so worn out you need a new one, you can always buy a replacement for a couple bucks. It's not that much. All right, so we'll put our drill bit in. And you want to use a high-speed drill bit as opposed to a diamond drill bit because we're drilling metal. It'll be much better that way. So we're going to drill a hole. And you know, I already have a hole here and I have a tendency to drill right into that hole. It works a lot better for me. A little cut loop would be nice. So, and a hole. Done deal. Okay. Sorry about that. Did you hear that? What was going on? All right. Oh, <laughs> I know what's going on. Uh, the lawn guy's here, and I have all of our windows open. Sorry. Give me one second. I'm going to close the window. <laughs> hazards of working at home. Oh well. Anyway, okay, so here we are. <laughs> um, so here, here we are, we have the hole in the middle, and then um, I have my slits cut into it. Okay, I have filed all the edges, and it's best to really file the edges now, okay, so that you don't have to file it later after you have curled everything. 
we're going to pull out a pair of pliers. You can use a round nose or a flat nose, it doesn't matter. But we're just simply going to take the corner, one of these corners, and we're going to curl them in. Ta -da. Oh, I'm glad you like the ring. You've had it for years. It's a thing. So notice I'm going to curl it right to the middle. Okay, and we're just going to pull it right in like so. And if you're having a hard time curling these edges in, go ahead and anneal it. That will be helpful. And we're going to go to every other corner. And we're just going to pull it right in towards that middle. A pinwheel is a very, very simple design. And notice I'm curling it right down, like so. one and my metal's a little hard because I hammered it down you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and um, anneal this it doesn't want to play Oh, so much easier now that I've annealed it. And if you didn't cut, make these slits long enough, just go in there and tri uh, and cut it a little bit more. It's not a big deal, okay? There we are. Well, I'm glad you like the design. Obviously not original, but hey, <laughs> you know, it's all adaptive. A lot of people have been asking me about design concepts and whatnot, and it's like, you know what? It's all adaptive. So clearly the pinwheel is not an original design, but it's about how you adapt it to what we want it to be. So now I'm just gonna go back into those corners that are now exposed, and I'm going to file and sand those off just to make it not sharp. So you want to do that on all the corners, like so. Okay. There we go. Now that it's gotten a little soft, it's being a little bendy on me. So be careful, right? All right. Feel pretty good about that. There we are. So our pinwheel is basically done. Now the trick here next is we're going to make the the, um, the bale. All right. So we're going to need about three inches of 16 gauge wire. You can go heavier if you want. You can definitely use square if you want. You just have to make sure that you make a hole that's large enough to accommodate your wire. Okay. And of course you can go about it a different way. The, um, the reason why I designed it this way because I wanted it to spin. This was, you know, I like things that, that move. I like things that articulate. So cut about three inches there. And then we're just going to create a, draw a little ball on the end of the wire. I am using, um, I am using brass wire just because I can. It's about contrast of color for me. And remember, I'm also cheap. What am I doing with all these samples? So right to the blue tip, I'm choosing to go with my um, Gentech because it makes it happen so much faster, especially with brass. Okay, so I didn't get a complete ball, so I'm going to the other side to make sure that it balls up nicely. We're gonna go ahead and quench and stick this in the pickle. Give that just a second to work. 
All right, so the mechanics of this, the trick here is you're going to need to push this out to hold it in place. And how am I doing that? I have a tube back here. Okay, so really this is just a crimp tube. It works. If you don't have crimp tubes but you have tubes in stock, just use a little tiny tube back there. You can't exactly use um, jump rings. I tried that because the jump rings have a tendency to work their way back up the, the bale on the back. So do, um, you, or if you, you need something that's a little wider than a jump ring, okay? Even if you've stacked up several jump rings. If you decide to use like three millimeter jump rings, you're gonna have to solder all those jump rings together and create a tube-like thing. Or, or you know, another thing you can do, now that I'm thinking about this out loud, you can take like 24 gauge wire and create a coil and coil the wire behind it at that bend just to keep it off, you know, so it's, it's not floppy, okay? And when you make it, you'll understand what I'm saying. All right, let's go ahead and grab this wire out. We'll go ahead and clean it. You can use a brass brush. You can use steel wool, whatever makes your little heart happy. I think it's a brass. It's steel wool kind of day to day. There we go. OK. All right, so uh, before I do that, I'm going to heat patina this piece. You know, I actually like it like this, but it's also a lot of fun to get these kinds of colors. Pretty simple. All you need to do is put a little bit of heat on there and watch it. Remember, if you do overheat this and you take it to fire scale, all you have to do is pickle it again, steel wool it or brass brush it and heat it again. So you always want to heat under where you want it to be. So if you want it to be purple, you want to stop at about red, right? I probably won't get any real good colors because I was annealing this earlier. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and take this to fire scale. I'm going to throw it in the pickle and we're going to do it again. Okay. Quench and then into the pickle. But because I annealed it and I didn't pickle it after annealing, it's, it's sort of beyond where I want it to be. You know, getting the blues and purples is my thing. Some people don't like that. Some people like the red and oranges. So remember, if you want red and oranges, it's just a little bit of heating. You want to get into those blues and purples, it's going to take a little bit more. You want to get into that silvery brown color, that's further down the line. Um, you also want to make sure that you don't quench if you are... Um, doing heat patina, you don't want to quench your piece because it will take that color out. But additionally, you definitely need to remember that this is copper. It will continue to oxidize. So keeping these colors long term, yeah, not really a thing unless you treat the metal. So treating the metal, you'll need to find some sort of a shellac or something that you can spray onto it to seal it in. Um, a lot of people like to use Krylon. I'm not a huge fan of Krylon. Um, Permalac is another one. I find it to be very expensive. Remember, these things will last about two years, it seems to be the general consensus, okay? So here, I'm just going to, it's out of the pickle, so I'm just going to brass brush it, you know, let's see. <sighs> My baby brass brush, I like it. Okay. And actually it's a little bit on the dirty side in the middle here for me, so I'm just going to stick my nylon brush in there. People have been asking me, what's the difference between this and a toothbrush? Frankly, I find that this gets into the smaller places, as you can see, and really cleans it out. Toothbrushes are great. I do keep a toothbrush on my workbench, too. It's all about the tools, right? Okay, let's try this one more time. Okay. A little bit of heat. 
watch it. You want to do this a little bit at a time. Don't get too ambitious. See, it's already changing. Okay. And in, especially in the middle, it's changing. And also, whatever surface you have it on, it's hot. So if you want to stop, take it off and put it on a cold surface, like a piece of tile or your bench block. And as we're going, you can totally see it is turning purple because, again, there's still heat in there. A little bit more. And then I'll be done. That's it. Okay, maybe a little more. Just a little bit. See, I've got my little purples. All right. I'm putting it on my bench block to arrest it, get it cooled off. Okay. And once that's cooled off, we'll just make our bale. So regarding the September schedule, I know we're like mid-month already. Oh my gosh, can you believe it? We're mid-month into September. I apologize. There's been a lot of changes. You know, I forgot there was a holiday. So thanks for tuning back in and um, watching this one. I know it was supposed to be last week, but I totally forgot it was supposed to be Labor uh, that it was Labor Day last week. So lots of changes, a few cancellations along the line. Um, Deb Perry will not be here next week, but I'll, where, what day is it? Oh, I'll be back next week. We'll do a UFO next week. And um, on Wednesday, we're going to do a studio tour with Janet Libby. Yes, I was in her studio a while ago, and um, just for this occasion, we went ahead and did a studio tour just in case I needed one, and I do, so this is perfect. Um, okay, so here, this is very optional. I have... Um, a three millimeter jump ring and I'm adding it on before I put it in only because I don't know I just thought it looked cute instead of just putting it into the hole it just gave it one more layer of design and you can see see it just sort of looks a little bit more finished right so all right and then I need a tube tube. Okay, so this is just a crimp tube, and this is not the tube I wanted, but why do I not have any in this container? So I pulled a container whoa, of tubes, and of course, not a single one came out of the right size I needed. <laughs> How do you like that? Golly. Okay. Um, I think my um, my wire is a little splayed, so I'm going to cut it at an angle. <laughs> you know, and I thought this was going to be easy. I, I I don't think I will be revisiting this pinwheel thing. I think this is just um, I think this is just God toying with me. So you know what I'm going to do. I have a perfectly good tube on this one. I'm going to cut this one off <laughs> and I'm going to use that one because of course no other tube that I'm pulling out is going to work for some weird reason. See look at that. Isn't that crazy? It fits right in there. These are all from the same manufacturer. Why do you not fit? Yes, I have to, re I have to try. Okay. That is craziness. All right, I give up. There it is. There's my tube. So you see, we're going to put the tube in behind the pinwheel because again, this just sort of suspends it off the, the wire and allows it to move a little bit more freely, okay? And I'm pulling it right up tight to my ball pin. Okay, so. Hey Andy, can you post a link to the scratch brush? Okay. So here, I'm just going to make a 90 degree bend. Do you see that? Best I can. All the way up. There we go. And you see, it makes a nice bend. The pinwheel sits off of the wire instead of falling back onto it. And then up here, we're going to go ahead and, um, I, 
I like a double bail. It just gives it a makes it a little bit more substantial. But you know, you could if you wanted the stick to be a little bit more substantial. Is you could um, what am I thinking? Bind it, go around the base just to make it a little bit more interesting if you want to. But eh, we're good. I'm just gonna start here, and I'm going to use. the third one down and I'm just going to start spiraling it like so to create my bail and of course I went the wrong direction <laughs> I know is this amateur hour or what okay so we're gonna bend this around very carefully So if you made that mistake too, like I did, can we bend this down? Are you gonna bend for me? OMG, wow. I had to say it, didn't I? I had to say this was gonna be really easy, didn't I? Uh-huh. What is wrong with this bail? The chain's gonna go the wrong direction. So we're gonna bend it like so. There we are. Oops. See, you need the bale to go this way. And I'm going to snip it off because that's one too many turns for me. And there it is. Done deal. Okay. <laughs> Sigh. All right. So, again, optional is your little three millimeter jump ring. Not optional is putting something behind it to make it suspend. You know, engineering of these things, you got to think about how things work and what makes them work. But there it is. Okay. So, any questions out there? I know. Why do I tor torture myself? I don't have an answer to that. <laughs> but that's a, that's a question. Um, so, TLS, Tuscarora Lapidary Society, we're doing a hybrid this week, starting on Thursday. So if you still want to register for that class or come to class, um, it is available at lapidary.org if you are looking for some, some in-person classes or hybrid classes. Uh, next week on Monday, I'm going to do a studio tour. I'm pretty excited to be at the Tuscarora Lapidary Society. It is in Brookhaven, Pennsylvania. It's outside of uh, Philadelphia, if you're not familiar with it. But they've been around for like 50 years. It's probably one of the most more established or most established lapidary clubs in the country. Um, I'm really impressed with it. I This is, I think, the third time that I'll be teaching there. I'm pretty excited to be doing an in-person and traveling a little bit um, and whatnot. So that's going to be on Monday. We'll do that studio tour and, you know, let you guys look around. I'm telling you, it is. Remember how I was talking about the the um, Peninsula School of Art facility? This is also very impressive in a very different way, but it is a really cool facility. Um, I'm sorry, honey. Oh, yeah. there's a comment here that you can make bigger pinwheels for outdoor. Uh, take a picture. Send it to me. Let's see how big we can get these things. It'll get really heavy, though. Be careful if you're making the bigger ones. And make sure you, you're, you're, you're um, careful of those sharp edges. But anyway, so then that's Monday. And then next Wednesday, I'll be back with the UFO. And the following Friday, I was supposed to be in New England, but that has canceled. And so instead, I am going to take a puppy maternity day. Yep. I'm picking up the puppy this week while we are in Pennsylvania and we're pretty excited about that. We're getting the house ready and puppy proofed and <laughs> puppy proofed, not puppy proofed, puppy proofed and um, yeah, Andy's ready. I'm ready. His name's going to be Titus Fury Gray. We're ex so excited about that and I'm sure he'll be um, paying us all a visit next Wednesday. So anyway, in the meantime, thanks for coming. Thanks for checking us out. and. Um, your continued support. If you are, by the way, looking for the download, if you have purchased a download from last year of It Spins, it has already been added, so you can download the one for today. If you haven't, it's still available. You'll get both, of course, and um, it's only a $5 download. It's a great way to show your, your support and keep this going here. So for now, thanks for hanging out. Like I said, it was a quick one. <laughs> it was still challenging, but Good results, right? Good results. All right. So 
have a great rest of the week. Enjoy what the weather, what's left of it, and um, we'll see you on, I don't know when, Janet.